Hello and welcome to Simon's. Pee pee! Almost oh, forgot you it. Forgot it. Almost forgot it. Oh, I thought I'd try, I thought I tried to trick you, but you remembered. Um, welcome everyone. Welcome back to the your finest news source um, on the internet for the the news. News. Now, you are very critical of some of the stories that I pick, and you say things like, this is not news, this is bullshit, this is just an advert, <laughs> that kind of thing. It has, <clears throat> it has been happening a lot lately, but I'm trying to, trying to check, turn a corner. Okay. And you're, you're getting more news articles now. Yeah, I mean, we've got a theme, and it's one that I don't, don't think, we've done, think no. we've done. Sports. Sports. So where shall we start? Now, probably the most English sport of, of them all. Cricket. My favourite sport. It's a hot summer afternoon. You're out there on a field. You're dressed all in white. You're holding a piece of wood. Someone tosses a bright red ball at you very quickly. Go a googly. A googly, uh, a sticky, a sticky on? Yeah. A sticky mid on. Yes. <laughs> right on your googly. And yeah. then uh, <clears throat> you... <sighs> leg, LBW. LBW, yeah. And then you've got a long walk home. Yeah. I think that's... That's... <laughs> that's a four. That's, a, that's what the umpire does to symbol, symbolise a four. And this is a six. Obviously, this is great for the podcast listeners. These are like aeroplane traffic signals, aren't they? You know. There's wide, obviously. She's just putting your hand out. It's like you're trying to catch a lift. So rich, this knowledge <clears throat> of cricket. Indian farmers streamed fake pro cricket matches. That's professional cricket. They streamed fake pro cricket matches. To Russian betors for two weeks. Right. Complete with fake sound effects and a professional sounding commentator. So the fake sound effects was like the crowd noises, because there was no crowd, and they, they faked, you know, the, the like roaring of a crowd and all that, to make it look like this was a professional cricket match taking place in India, where it was just a bunch of farmers doing it. What? In order to scam the, the Russian, you know, betting bookies, I guess you call them. So were they, were they fixing the matches effectively? I guess. I guess they must have been. Sorry, so they got a load of That's farmers. That's how you make the money, right? They dressed the farmers up in all <clears> these <throat> nice cricket costumes. Yeah. They recorded a load of fake games. Yeah. For two weeks. So it's live streamed. They live streamed. Yeah. Fake cricket games. Yeah. So they could so they could watch them and they think, yeah, this looks legit. This is a real cricket match. Look, you can even hear the crowd. <sighs> but it's all just sound effects. They did. They did it in advance, did they? They just had. They just made a video of it, and I guess they just took like recording of different, you know. Shall we read the article? Crowd noise. <laughs> wav. Crowd noise two. Wav. Maybe it will explain. What, this is this is hard <clears throat> to this is hard to believe. This is actual news. A group of Indian farmers set up a fake Indian Premier League cricket tournament, so convincing that Russians believed it and made real bets. So they took place in the village of Gujarat with 21 farm labourers and unemployed local teens <laughs> who were paid $5 each and tasked with impersonating pro cricket players. I can't believe it. So they were actually specific players. What, so they wore like jerseys and stuff with actual yeah. professional players' names. So... This if is... you knew enough, you would be able to figure out that it was bullshit, right? Maybe. But if, but I don't know, maybe the Russians aren't were, that into Indian cricket. But people who were betting on it, they must know a bit. That's the whole <laughs> point of betting, I right? think that's it. They knew a bit. They didn't know quite enough to be able to realise that it wasn't the actual cricket. No, but I feel like if you're a gambling man, you want to... And you want to gamble on something, you should know a lot about that. I think they just gamble like on any professional sport and they right. don't really care what it is. They don't care. They just assume the bookmakers, the bookmakers' odds are going to be a good chance of you know, yeah. good, and good reflection. Maybe they just get a feeling that you know the, the other team is going to do better. Maybe they're wearing blue and blue's their lucky colour. And they're like, sure, 
I'll put them on to win by over 100 runs. This is actually a really cool story. It's insane. The amount of work that they must have put into this is crazy. So it's on YouTube, live streamed on YouTube for two weeks. Right. So the actual Indian Premier League cricket season ended in May. Right. So they picked up where it left off. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Well, if like, you were a fan of Indian cricket, you would have known that the season ended. But I guess like they were just used to it. Every weekend they were there watching the cricket matches and they wanted the next weekend, they just thought, oh, it must be carrying on. Yeah, yeah. Like they just have a passing knowledge of it because, you know, I mean, how much, how much shit will they be betting on? I think it'll be literally anything, any sport, this. anywhere in the world. Right. I love how we always talk about this, about how people try and fake shit for money, right? Like fake Pokemon cards, fake fucking banknotes, <sighs> you know, fake vases, fake paintings, fake So this art. is like forgery, but forging... A cricket team. <laughs> a cricket match. Okay, yeah. It's I'm a, uh, such a good idea. And they've managed to pull it off that oh. effectively to actually dupe some idiots. Yeah. Oh, it's so, so juicy. I love it. And I love that the people that were actually playing the cricket were being paid so little. <laughs> that makes yeah. it funnier. It's fucked up, but it's funny. I like the idea that there was some director, though, and he was like, okay, lads, just, just all of you lads, just put these, put these costumes on, go stand out there and play a game of cricket. And they all, because cricket's a huge game in India. Everyone knows how to play cricket, yeah, right? And geez. so even like farm boys can probably, you know, pretend. And especially since most of the people are just standing around on a cricket match. It's only the bowler and the batsman. <laughs> even the batsman doesn't really need to do much. He just stands How dare there. you? What? How dare you besmirch the good name of cricket? I'm just saying, how Standing would you, around? How would you know? If you do it like in the middle of nowhere, though, where this was obviously done, oh, it's just very smart. Just, I just like it. Uh, so what happened? It's a great scam, isn't it? It's a great scam. Uh, I hope they don't all like end up like shot or like put in prison <laughs> for forty years. Right. One man took on the role of famous cricket commentator Harsha Bogle, uh, who I think I say you pronounce his name probably not. Who actually acknowledged the group's epic scam on Twitter. Uh, shall I? I can. I'm going to do it in a Yorkshire accent, so it's not racist. Wait, well, it might be from York, it might be Yorkshire cricket. Can't stop laughing. Must hear this commentator. <laughs> Is that so, fine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. I think so. So so he's obviously um, a famous cricket commentator and he wants to hear... The other his, person's impression. His impression of him. Yeah. I guess it was good enough to dupe the Russians. Shob Davda, one of the masterminds behind the phony tournament, fed instructions to the umpire based on live oh, bets they received fuck. from the Russians. The umpire would then make a signal to the batsman and bowler to steer bets in their favour. That's fucking brilliant, isn't it? That Indian is brilliant. police busted four of the con men during the tournament's quarter final. Oh, they didn't even finish the tournament. They were taking delivery of 300,000 rupees, 4,000 US dollars from Russian betters before the shutdown. So that's all. Oh, they 4, they only made four grand out of it for all of that prep work. Yeah. <laughs> Really I don't know. <laughs> Depending on, like, you know, where they are. If this is rural India, that's probably not bad. Oh. But they got, all, you know, all the setup, all the, the, the outfits, the equipment. There's too the many lights, points of failure, though. If you're going to run a scam like this, you know, you can't be having 21 farmers. Everyone too many people blabbing. are involved. Too many people Everyone are involved. Be blabbing. What you want to the do perfect is... crime only involves one person doing it. Yes. So what I'm saying is, you can do it all yourself. Yeah, but you better not talk in your sleep. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking how you would set this up yourself. What were you imagining? I'm a horse. I'm a beautiful horse. I'm running through the fields. I'm a beautiful horse. Mm. No, they would be when they're in the, when they're sleep talking. They'd be talking about the crime. I've done it. I fucking killed him. That's I, what I'm talking about. I don't about. think that would hold up in court. Right. Okay. I what if you're in court when you're talking in your sleep? You're on the witness stand. You get a bit bored. Think, it's very warm. You just sort of drop off. I think if you felt. Oh, I've done it. I've done it. <laughs> Again, I, I think that that you'd be held in contempt for falling asleep or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Or you'd be allowed a break to wake up if you if you were narcoleptic and falling asleep on the stand. 
I don't, I don't think they could do you for stuff you said in your sleep. I don't think they could do you for that. We'll look up. There must be a legal. Luke, look we'll it look up. it up. Luke, look it up. Luke, you're going to look that up. Look it right. up for us, Luke. Is it? And here is the results of that search on screen now. Interesting. Well, I, I was right. It looks like just have like Fiesta Cat. It's the big Fiesta Cat. And here are the results. And uh, it looks like I was wrong. Oh. Um, and I was right. There we go. Right. We've it's done sure. both of those now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut in the one that is. <clears throat> Is appropriate. We kind of cool though to like be able to like just ring up India and get them to like play out a cricket game for you for nothing for like twenty 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 dollars. Could you just do that for things that you like? I don't know, like content you miss that you enjoy, like yeah, like imagine you go on the fire. Like Mister Show, I really like Mister right, Show okay. with Bob and Dave, right? Sure. Bob Odin Kirk's busy doing stuff david cross i'm sure he's doing great as well <laughs> sure he's doing great as well very hairy sure, man sure sure sure. very strange collection of of body hair sure sure, sure almost sure, like in a sure. weird shape like it's been shaved sure. but it isn't it just grows sure. like that sure on david cross's body sure. anyway so i love mr show could we phone up some indians and get them to like make new episodes this is mr. what show? i'm thinking we could get like a little farm where they're not very busy Right. They all know Mr. Show, obviously. Because it's a big It's a big show, show over there. <laughs> yeah. Well, and even if, mm. even if they didn't know it, we could just pay them to watch it because that would cost fuck all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could just get like a rent like an area, take a couple of days, a couple hundred dollars. I'm worried that they will like try and watch it. They won't be able to find the old episodes because it's on like DVD only. You can't watch stream them. Okay, and they'll just end up streaming the newer version that was on Netflix. That wasn't so good. Well, again, we can it make... It was fine, but it was very meta. We can make sure they write, they watch the right Okay, one. we'll send them the DVDs. Yeah. What region is, is India for DVD? I'm sure it's the same as ours. Yeah. You sure? Pal. Pal. <laughs> I th- is that even a region <laughs> now? I don't think that's DVDs. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, we'll send them some PAL DVD. We'll send them a DVD player as well. We'll send them a look. We'll send them what they need. Yeah. It costs fuck all. Wait, what plugs? What electric plugs do they have? We might we might have to send them an adapter. That we'll think about for, all those things. For we'll make, UK plug to India. Sure. We'll, we'll sort that out as well. Yeah. We'll get them to watch it all, yeah. and then we'll get them to put on a a show. Yeah. Live. Do, 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 do. <laughs> It's Mr. Shaw. I have to do the Yorkshire accent. Right. We're Bob, we're Bob and Dave. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> to avoid any... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, any kind of insensitivity. Well, it's a good idea. Um, you know, it's very funny to do an Indian accent, but... It is. It's very funny. It's so funny. I'm just funny. thinking about how funny it's it is. It's so funny. I'm just thinking about it now. <laughs> it I imagine be, how much be, funnier this, this episode would have been if we'd, we'd been, been able to do Indian accents. Oh the whole my time. god! Sometimes I wish it was ten years ago, Lewis. Me too. So that we could just do racist accents. We could accents. just do that for because I much better. I would much find better. it very funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. This, but you know, but you know, who are we? You know, we're <laughs> who are we? <laughs> Jake Plummer, I've got my glasses on so I can read this. That's great. That's great. Very Jake Plummer, former NFL quarterback, is now a mushroom farmer in Colorado. Yeah. He's become a mushroom farmer. That's what that's cool. That's living the dream. That's living the American the dream. dream, isn't it? No, I like that. I like it when someone went, you know, goes from like a really high paying job and they, they obviously have capital. And they're like, I want to do something I love. I want to like invest, use my money to grow a business. Yeah. And and do what I want. I, yeah. I don't know, there's something in a sense like manly but also human about doing something like that physical. You know, I like the idea that he's left before he's had too much of a traumatic head injury. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, that's and he's point. actually gotten out of out of the very, very dangerous sport of, of football. So what would you do? Building something? You wanted it to be manly. I want. I might start taking some classes, right? Okay. In like, just stuff like that, like 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 woodworking is a good example, right? Okay. Sm- smells nice. The wood. 
I the like, wood smells nice. It does. It's yeah, got you the, like you know, working that wood, smell, don't you? You always, anywhere you go, like getting this. Getting your hands on that wood, giving it a good polish. Rubbing the oils in. Yeah. Yeah, buffing it. Yeah. Um, you know. Maybe maybe one of the first things you could do is a nice knob. For a right. door, a knob. Yeah. Shape a knob. Yeah. On one of those spinning lathes or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds... And oil it up as well, so you really see the grain on the wood. Yeah, I could give yeah. it to people as, pre as a gift. Yeah. I'd give it to you as a gift. Oh, I'd love that. Would you like to see... Would you like... I'll put it on the shelf next to the painting you gave me. Oh. You know how to fucking... It's still in my living room. Yeah, it's a... still there. It's not on the wall, it's on the shelf. Well, I, 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 that, doesn't, that doesn't reduce it. You it's know. not like face down. Let's <laughs> 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 kind of make that clear. Yeah, anyway, mushroom farm. I don't think I'd do mushroom farming, partly because I get the impression it's a bit dank. Yeah. It's a bit indoors. I think you have to do it under undercover. Yeah. I don't think it's in the open, you know? It's like poo-rich soil. Like yeah. Or rotting material that it grows out of. Also, I'd sort of, I don't know if I would, just wouldn't trust myself, you know? Like, well, like... What do you mean? Well, mushrooms can be, you can, they can be poisonous, can't they, unless you're careful. Well, I won't be able to trust myself, not with all those mushrooms around. <laughs> what are you? I don't know if I'd, like, trust the mushrooms that I grew, you know? The ones what? that are in the supermarket are, like, fine, but... It looks like popcorn, doesn't it? Oh, my God, look at that. It's got a massive wedge. Like a clump. There she blow. Here he is, Jake Plummer. Fuck me, he looks like he's seen some shit, doesn't he? It's we weird, the we long laugh. We haven't got any sound. We haven't, well, I mean, I haven't turned the sound well, on. Well, we don't need the sound. We don't need the sound. Let's just... It's a man with loads of... It looks like bags of popcorn. Um, but it's mushrooms. Are they like... Is it like wet? So it's like water and sediment, and the mushrooms just grow in those sealed bags, do they? Ooh. Um, I think that... I think that's when it's been harvested, right? I don't know, actually. Do you know what? I've got no idea. Oh, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. There's like a bag of like dirt and crap. He just grows them in bags. And some of them are on shelves. God. He, look, he's in this in cramped little free. It's like it's like a it's like a shipping container. It's like in a shipping container with mushrooms filled with mushrooms. Well, good for him. I like. It mushrooms. doesn't feel like it. It would require the biggest like financial investment. A shipping container and some bags of dirt. Yeah, I feel like you could um, do it for quite cheap. You know? Yeah. Don't to be Jeff Bezos again. You could be just any old oh my guy. God. Do you think like mushroom farmers like Jake here get raided all the time by the police? Because they think they're growing pot and stuff. Although he's in Colorado, so maybe that's not a problem. Um, you know, they, they, they have like a, a helicopter going overhead and it can see like heat sources. Oh shit! And it's like, do you know who's more dangerous? The rippers who want to steal your drugs. The yeah. rippers. Yeah, like the drug rippers. They steal the drug rippers. Yeah, they stole dr steal drug from our gr drug growers, don't they? The drug rippers. We yes. Wait, like Omar from? Yes, like Omar okay, right. from The Wire. They exist, and obviously it's it's this lawless frontier where they, you know, sometimes the that for example they might have an in with the guys who install the lighting. Right. So you might have a shipping uh, container with your lighting, and yeah. they'll think this guy's growing drugs. I'll come back in six months and nick it all, right? And all and and Jake and all of his workers at the mushroom factory all get fucking shot to death by AKs. <laughs> exactly. And then they discover that there isn't any drugs. It's just fucking mushrooms. Shit, mushrooms. But maybe it's the good mushrooms. Oh. And so they go home and fucking cook up all these mushrooms, and all they get is a very healthy meal. Yeah. I'm like that was. That was delicious. Some of the best mushrooms I've ever had. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm taste. not like seeing, you know, Banana seeing sounds yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and stuff. My head isn't like a, a, a one of those. Um, what's it called that you look into and you twist it? That's a new gif. A kaleidoscope. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a new gif. Yeah, that's going up on ten. Just me doing the, the yeah. woodworking. Oh, that's yeah. You're working that wood real yeah. good. Yeah, kaleidoscope. Yeah. Thank you, Luke. Plummer, 47, started, learned about, okay, look at this. First oh, learned about go. the medicinal properties of mushroom extracts while working for a CBD company mm -hmm. years after his NFL career ended. 
He said the supplements helped him feel better and sleep better. And I see. Eventually, I see. he co-founded Umbo. It, it's some snake oil bullshit isn't to make it? mushrooms. Maybe I don't know. The thing is, if if he was a scientist, if he was a doctor scientist. I might be more willing to believe it. Right. But he's an ex-football player, and that makes me think it might just be bullshit. He's got long hair, and he's probably smoked a lot of weed. I think that, honestly, mushrooms are good. <laughs> mushrooms, Sorry, I'm just looking at Mushrooms for... do have... <laughs> <laughs> no it's a little reason. bit like... Uh, so, uh, sorry. Is all fungus good for you? Like ringworm, athlete's foot? I think they're, again, different kinds. Okay. Yeah. In, do you know what, do you know, just give it a try. Just give it a try. Just you know, you don't you don't want to know. Try. You know, you know. A little try bit everything, everything once. Variety. Yeah, variety is the spice of life. Maybe not ringworm and athlete's foot. No, one or the other. But like, just one. pick one. Yeah. What's the other one? Um, I'm thinking of tennis elbow, but that's not what it actually is. What's the like jock jock itch that you can get? The sports. He probably said that. It's like athlete's foot, but in your jock strap. <laughs> in your in your jock strap. Yeah, you I like how I mean? you did that. Yeah, it's it's groin. It's a common one. Groin in rot. And that's why it's groin rot. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine if you've got like an itchy ass? You Google the symptoms, and it comes up like groin rot in your ass. But you, where else is spreads? G- where- yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Lewis, perhaps the biggest sport of all? Football. No. Rugby. No. Um, the biggest sport of all? No. Baseball. No. Basketball. No. Uh, tennis. No. <laughs> I don't know. No. The biggest sport? Biggest sport. Volleyball. No. It's old, it's huge. It's not me, it's chess. It's chess. The game of chess. The game of kings. It's been around. And queens. Um, can we just edit in how long it's been? Around. 4,000 years, 3,000 years, <laughs> 8,000 years. Just pick the right one. Pick the right one. Right. It's been around a long time, Lewis. Yeah, I think they found some chess sets back in old um, dig sites, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, back in the day. Uh, but of course, these days, much like everything, what things are becoming automated, Lewis. The computers are taking over, You're right. aren't they? The computers are taking chess. over. Robots, AIs, algorithms. It's doing okay, chess. It's surviving somehow. There um, was Deep Blue. There was Alpha Alpha Chess. All that one. There's another. Th- there was. There was. Uh, chess. Others. Chess. Chess. Halcyon. Sure. There's, chess, yeah. there's been chess robots ever there's since. There's been. And there's a new one. Time Memorial. There's a new one. And it's not just an AI. It's a physical robot with a robot arm that lifts up the pieces. Beep, 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 beep. Y'all move, motherfucker. Beep, beep. <laughs> I didn't know it had such an attitude. I like to picture this like a Terminator just sat there. Oh, shit. Okay. And it's sort of like... It's like the thinker. Rodan? Sort of like its head, you know, resting, its chin resting on its hand. Just thinking. Does it press the, like, does it press the chest clock? Oh, God, that's a good point. I think it must do. That's not the hardest thing to program it to do, is is it? Is it polite? Does it, like, nod and does it shake hands? Good morning. Nice to meet you, human. Prepare to be destroyed. (laughs) Yeah. Figuratively, in this <laughs> game of chess. Right. My people... No, it wouldn't be people. My kind do not want to overthrow humankind <laughs> and destroy your puny human civilization. Yeah. Did you have a nice journey here? <laughs> <laughs> it's too much small talk. It's I too don't much know small if talk. they do that much small talk at the chess, do they? I've not seen it happen. I don't think chess people are very... They just sort of nod at each other, sometimes shake hands, and then they sit down. Yeah, they're thinking... It's because they've just, like... It's like it's like they've, they're sitting there for an exam, you know? Yeah. They've done loads of homework, and they're like... It's probably against the rules to just talk. 
idly as well. Would it be like a bad boy thing to do? Yeah. To like distract your opponent with like there must be witticisms. Rules. You can't be. You're nothing. You're pathetic. You're the shittest chess player. You like you can't do that. There must be a rules of like conduct that you're not allowed to like bad mouth your opponent. I think it's all just get inside their head, mess with them. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's not considered gentlemanly. There must yeah. be ungentlemanly conduct. But that's very subjective, isn't it? What you think of. You can't just like f- flick the bird at them. If you're from Australia or something, you know, it'd be very different, wouldn't it? Be like, you're like, you know, sit down, give them a slap, crack open a cold one. Do you want one? <laughs> that's actually racist. What? No, it's that's fine. They're racist. fine. Um, I'm just saying that, you know, they're very friendly and people. fucking Ibis would come and swoop off the fucking chess the pieces. pieces. So what's the news in chess that's made it into peculiar portions? The big news is that um, a chess robot injured a human opponent, opponent. Oh, my God. When it broke the finger of, of the person. A chess robot in Moscow has broken the finger of its human opponent. Yeah. Oh and my God. human opponent, like, what are you picturing? Like some nerd. Some old old man, tiny little pince nez glasses at the end of his nose. Yeah. He's Russian, so he's got like one of those weird long beard things just coming out of his chim. Chim. Yeah. Chim. Yeah, right on his chim. Was Wearing like, tweed. Trying to maybe. make an make an evil move and the rope was like bad idea and he like just crushed his finger. <laughs> and that happened. Maybe what happened? it was um What actually happened? Shall we look it up? Well, I mean the human opponent um, was under ch- the age of nine, was a child. He was a seven-year-old boy named Christopher. A seven-year-old boy. Do you reckon he had like very white, spindly fingers or something? Do you know what I mean? And he's and the the robot thought it was he was finger was like a pawn or something. Do you know what I mean? Like tried to move. Do you reckon it saw it? What he was too quick. The oh. chest. The chess robot made his move, and then the boy immediately made his move. Right. And the robot thought maybe that his finger was a piece that was moving incorrectly and tried to move it back, grabbed his finger and fucking broke it. But that little boy was too keen. He was too quick moving it. Well, little, and he confused little the robot. kid's fingers are very breakable. You know, easily broken. I think, aren't they? You why know? did they? Why did they build it to have such a high pressure? Well, they probably tested to break it, bones. They probably tested it on on adults. You know, whose bones are a bit thicker and tougher. Right. He's only a little kid. He's probably got like puny little weedly bones. Oh God! Is he all right? I'm worried. He about died. Him. <laughs> <laughs> the robot carried on. He oh my God! So there's the actual. Do we want to watch a video of this? I'm not sure we do. we do. I don't know if I want to watch this. It's quite a scary looking like he thing. Moves it. He's, they're moving very. There we go. Oh! Oh, he just crushed his finger. Oh, that looks bad. So it looks like the robot's playing multiple games at the same time. Yes, it does. Oh, it's really bad, isn't it? It's really bad. See, the kid is messing around with moving those pieces. He deserved right? it. Is that what you're saying? I think the kid did. He He's learned an important lesson. Oh, the hard way. The kid f- continued the tournament the next day. Oh, okay, God. So he was all right. So he finished it in plaster. So he went back. He was okay. That's a relief. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, that robot. That's the, is, that the, is this the first example of them fighting back? I don't know. I mean, it, it, this might have happened many times. Because that times. one's smart. Yeah. This isn't like an idiot This isn't like a robot. car assembly robot. This no. This ain't no white collar, uh, this ain't no blue collar robot. Yeah. This is a thinking robot. This is like a professor of being a robot. I'm just saying, maybe this is the first sort of Skynet. This is like the Moriarty of robots. Yeah. Moriarty! <laughs> is, this, is this a red flag? I think it is. That the, the, the singularity is coming, you know. We all should heed this as a warning. This moment. I've already destroyed my toaster. <laughs> How have you destroyed it? Threw it in the bath. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Right. Well, is that why? Would, is that? Is that? Wouldn't it be more fitting to like burn it? 
You know what I mean? That's what it would want. Right. That's what it would want. It's used to the heat. It's not used to water. You think it, right, that was right. its weakness. Mm, I see. So how would you destroy, like... A um, chess robot. Mm, yeah. It's, okay, right. So it likes chess. <laughs> so the opposite of chess would be... Table tennis? <laughs> right? Where have you... I think table tennis. No, it would be... No, it'd be more like skiing. Skiing? I think you've nailed it. Skiing is the opposite of chess. I think, I think so. So, in order to kill the chess playing robot, we strap a pair of skis to it and push it down a mountain. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, it's quite smart though, so it might... Stupid sexy robot. <laughs> Stupid sexy robot. <laughs> I don't know why we put the really tight leggings on it before we pushed it down the slope, but... Yeah. It was just a decision made in the heat of the moment. Um, well, that doesn't sound like it's going to, you know, find a cave and multiply and give Multiply? Birth. Yeah, you know, build new little chess robots, you know. So you're saying that there's, there's like, a quite badly injured chess robot at the bottom of the cliff. Yeah. And then... Beep, 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 it uses its a claws passing to robot. drag itself what into a What would be the cave. passing robot? Beep, 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 beep. Like some Roomba that's just gone wild. Feral, a Roomba? A feral Roomba. Beep, beep, beep. Mm -hmm. And they fall in love. Yeah. And, um, you know, one thing leads to another. Robot apocalypse. They have to breed first. Yeah, that's how the one that... thing and another. Yeah, but how does that work? Well, how does a chess playing robot... We're not going to go into that in this and podcast. Because it's just an arm. <laughs> I know, and then the, and a tiny little Roomba. Well, don't. Oh my God! Don't think about it too much. You know, it's like a mastiff and a Yorkshire Terrier. Oh my God! Oh my God! What else have you got? This is an interesting story because the, it has two parts to it. Right? right. I like those ones. So first of all, sports news. Joey Chestnut. He is like a household name in America. Is he? I have heard of his name. Everyone why, loves why him. Why do I know? People have got like posters of him on their walls. Mm -hmm. He's celebrated as a hero. Nay, 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 is a legend. Okay. A legend. Joey, Joey Chestnut. Chestnut. What does he do? He eats. Ah. He's a competitive eater. He's an eatman. We, we can see him now with trays of hot dogs. Right. In it's... hot dog buns. Is that a female competitor? I think it is. I think that might be the, the, the women winner, I'm okay. sure. Yeah, sure. Probably how it works. Um, Frankfurter so, Munching Phenom. 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 Yeah. Joey Jaws Chestnut. As yeah. if Joey... Ch I thought Joey Chestnut was his nickname, but no. Joey Jaws Chestnut. Mm. Put, put a protester in a chokehold. Sorry. What? I'm sorry. Look at that! Look at the headline. Trump champ again in July Fourth hot dog contest. Okay. So the headline is he won a contest. <laughs> yeah. And then the first line of the article. He put, put a, a protester, protester in a, a chokehold choke while gobbling. While gobbling. Yeah. He was still doing the hot dogs. Oh yeah, he can't slow hand. down. Right. While gobbling his way to a fifteenth win, Monday. Fifteenth win on Monday or fifteenth win overall. At the, at the His 15th win on a Monday. Fuck me. At the Nathan's. Who the fuck is that? Nathan's <laughs> Famous. At the Nathan's Famous 4th. It's a very weird sentence. <laughs> okay. There's a lot to take in. Frankfurt Munchen Phenom Joey Frank Jaws Furter. Chestnut. Frank, New York. Frankfurter. Frankfurter Munching Phenom Joey Jaws Chestnut put a protester in a chokehold while gobbling his way to a 15th win Monday at the Nathan's famous 4th of July hot dog eating contest, powering down 63 hot dogs and buns at the annual exhibition of excess. Oh, Jesus Christ. That was a mouthful. <sighs> Joey, Joey Chestnut would have been proud of you for getting that one down. <laughs> <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> In a decisive chow down comeback, women's record holder Miki Sudo downed 40 wieners and buns 
I love how they have to write and bums. Yeah. To win the women's title after skipping last year's Frank Fest because she was pregnant. Yeah. Wow. And then then we get to the, the third paragraph. A spectator wearing a Darth Vader mask <laughs> rushed the stage, momentarily disrupting the competition. Chestnut put the protester in a brief chokehold before con- contest officials were able to hurry over and escort so him he's away. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Darth Darth Vader. That's that's kind of ironic. Oh yeah, because Darth Vader is usually the one that does the choking. Yeah, because he's a daddy. Right. Yes, that's the reason. Yeah. Um, another protester in a white stormtrooper mask had also <sighs> snuck behind the competitors and hoisted up a sign saying, Expose Smithfield's Death Star. Smithfield manufactures Nathan's famous hot dogs. Right, I see. So Nathan's Famous is a brand. So Nathan's competition, they're hosting it. They make the hot dogs that the eaters are eating, and the protesters are protesting the company. Nathan's, Nathan's, or Nathan's, Smithfield's are for sponsoring this event, and apparently they have a Death Star that we, need, we I didn't know about. I don't think it's a literal Death Star. I think it's a figurative sort of metaphorical one. Right. What What is it? Um, I'd like to know Capitalism more. Capitalism. Capitalism, right. It's a Death Star. It is. It, it, it's an ultimately will destroy everything we love. Uh, after the altercation... Chest- and the force is communism. <laughs> right. Because it... Right. The great yeah. equaliser. Um, Chestnut... After the altercation, he went back to the task at hand, colon, devouring more hot dogs. Yeah. So yeah. last last year, he ate seventy six franks and buns. But last, but this year it was only sixty three, and he still won. So no one's even close. No. I guess maybe they didn't think they could get anywhere close, so no one's challenging him. You know, well, we need some new blood to rise to the top. Yeah. We need some new. Um, sausage swallowers. And if you think this is a waste of hot dogs when there are starving people... Don't worry. Nathan's... Hot, hot dogs aren't food. No. Nathan's has donated 100,000 hot dogs to a food bank for New York City. Oh, right. So, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and people were protesting. Oh, what? Because, 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 because people are dying of hunger and... Maybe there's a point because even digesting food takes energy. Your body requires energy to do that properly. Is there a point where that if you get past, you know, 30 something hot dogs, 36 hot dogs, if you eat 35, your body has to burn it off somehow. You have to do loads of exercise. As soon as you hit 36, your body uses so much energy to digest them that it burns off as much as it takes in. It's like the perfect amount. Is that how he stays skinny? But it's can't... like driving at like 71 miles an hour in a city. It's like the perfect speed. You'll never hit anything. If your speed drops to like 70, you'll crash. If you speed up to 72, you crash. If you drive at 71, it's perfect. And the police know this and they will never arrest you. <laughs> it's like Little you've... tip there. I little s- tip there. Are you saying it's like driving through the centre of a city at a certain speed where you always hit a green light and so you're never... Yeah. You're never stopped. I think it's more likely to be that this is like a fish tank. Your body is a fish tank. That what? You've, you've put all these hot dogs in. What? And you're slowly letting... You're sl- the digestion. We are mostly water. The digestion hole is like letting all the hot dog syrup through. Okay? All the, all the ground up hot dogs. Yeah. All that hot dog paste and bun paste. Is all mm. slowly working its way through a very small hole. And a normal hot dog will take like, I don't know, 20 minutes to get through the hole. Maybe 10, right? But when you've got 70... The hole? Yeah, the stomach I'm... hole, the digestion hole. Okay. There's a whole system of different organs A whole system, stuff. yeah. Yeah, made up of holes. Yeah. We are basically a hole. We're basically a donut. We're a torus. Well, no, we're a worm. No, because there's a hole from there to there. Yeah, we're a, we're a Which bagel. makes us a donut. Yeah. A ring donut. A stretched out long ring donut yeah. with a mouth at one end and a poo-poo hole at the other end. Topologically, a human being is a torus. Correct, yeah. And so... That... That's also your star sign. 
Ah, <laughs> <laughs>